What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports and today we are working on the C5. Yes, I have had lights. Uh, you guys, if you've been watching this channel long and you've watched all my uploads, I did an LED conversion on the headlights, which honestly, they are way better, but man, putting those in was a little more of a chore than what I thought it would be. But when I ordered those, and so that's been several months back, actually before I actually had it in the garage, but um, I also ordered interior lights. So today, we're gonna upgrade the interior lights. Very similar to what we did on the green truck, we did on the Trailblazer. Um, the weather is terrible today, and so I can't do other stuff that I wanted to do. And uh, like I said, I've had these laying around for a while. So what we're going to do is we're gonna be upgrading the interior lights and the reverse lights. And so um, I'm gonna pull this thing out. I've kind of got stuff moved around. Like I said, there's, there's a bunch of snow outside and the weather's terrible. So I'm gonna try to like pull it up here in the center and maybe we can get started on replacing some of these bulbs. So actually, before I even move it, I wanna show you guys what I'm gonna be replacing. So I got one of those kits, um, like I said before on other projects, really cheap and to me, uh, you can't beat it. So if they go out, I mean, you spent 20 bucks on these. This should include all the lights that you see like in the footwell here. So there's footwell lights on each side. You can see there's lights in the back and as well as the map lights. And I don't think this thing has vanity lights. But, oh, it does. So maybe it comes with those as well. We'll just have to see. And then it comes with an under hood light as well. So um, the downside to these replacing these halogen lights is you're gonna want to go through and take them all out as soon as possible. So like right now they've been on long enough that they're probably gonna burn you when you go to take them out, which sucks. Uh, they just get really hot. So that's another cool thing about these is that you're gonna be a lot, uh, it's gonna be a lot cooler. So hopefully it doesn't melt any housings or anything. Um, these old ones sometimes will deform the housing, but let's get started. Um, I also, you can see I've got LEDs for my reverse lights. Those big reverse lights on the back of these things are just so ginormous and they look really dated when you back up. So we're gonna be replacing those as well. That's a little more of a process, but let's pull this thing up a little bit so I have a little more room to work. And uh, actually, maybe I can just do it right here. So we're gonna start back here in the back. You can see that you just pull this thing out. It's just pushed into the carpet there and not a real great fitment to be honest with you, but we're probably gonna need a little pick to unplug these. Maybe we'll get lucky and I can get my fingernail under it. I don't know, maybe not. Tell you what we could do, we could just unscrew the bulb instead of trying to do it like that. I was just gonna bring the housing out. So you can see we got one of them out, just a 194 bulb. So that thing is really hot. We're gonna let it set for a second. Let's go to the other side here. Let's see if we can pull it out. Like I said, there's not much to it as far as pulling them out. So now, like I said, we'll let those set for a second. We'll go grab our kit and see what bulbs that we need to replace them with. Like I said, it's just a 194, but that kit has several bulbs in it. So it's cooled off for a minute. We're gonna plug this new bulb in. You can see that it's the one that has similar shape. And these things are generally polarity specific. So if you plug it in and it doesn't work, then you get an idea that that's what it is. Oh man, so much better looking. The fitment back in the day on these C5s is not quite as good as the newer ones, but that looks nice. All right, let's go back. Let's go to the other side here. The camera's gonna be a little noisy when I move it. Sorry, guys. Try to get my light in place. This thing is tented. So it's gonna be a little darker than working outside with something with no tent. Got this one plugged in. As I said, if you put it in and it doesn't work, you know that you got it wrong. You just reverse it and you're fine. So far I've gotten lucky. That's a pretty big improvement. All right, let's go up front. So under the dash here in the front, I'm just gonna use a small flat blade screwdriver to pop this out. If I can find the area I need to be in. Goodness. There we go. Like I said, they're gonna be hot. 
Ooh. That one doesn't turn out like the other one. Definitely a difference, guys. All right, let's go to the other side. So same thing here, using my just flat screwdriver, small flat blade screwdriver. Pull this guy out. Put the new one in. Put it back in place. Okay, on to the map lights. So for the map lights, I'm sure it's pretty bright, but there is a section that you can pull on kind of towards the front or the back of the car. So it'd be the closest to the back. And you just have to flip this out. There's a little slit in here that allows you to, I don't know that I'm gonna be able to do it while I'm holding the camera. Maybe I'll get lucky here. You see what I'm talking about? And so in order to get these out, they're way up in there and they're that bus style. I'm gonna use my pick and just pull them out. Looks like I pulled the housing apart. Probably easier to take the mirror out to do this one. There we go. So you can see that style. So we need to grab the other one and uh, I'm probably gonna have to push that housing back up into place, but we'll replace those. Holy cow, that's hot. So as opposed to working upside down, I decided to just use a, I think it's a T20 and then unplug the back of the mirror because you could see these things came out of their channel here. And so you can push them back in. There's a little piece that holds them on one side. Um, you can see how that is bent. See that on the bottom? That bottom piece slides into a piece of plastic. So rather than, like I said, work upside down, I've got this one back in its channel like it's supposed to be. So that's what it's supposed to look like. I just gotta get this one in place and then put the bulbs in. But Instead of, like I said, working upside down, this makes things a little bit easier on you. So I know there's a lot of light here, but this was a testing nightmare. So um, I had to bend these prongs because they're not quite small enough to hold those lights. So just take a pair of needle nose. I didn't show you guys that, I probably should have, but, um, and then make sure they get back in their channels. That way they're nice and tight and they don't rattle loose. But um, we're good now. I went ahead and put the plastic back on this one. I need to do this one, and then we will put it back on the windshield. Now, I'm hoping this kit came with visors, since it has these old halogen-looking visor bulbs. But same situation here. We're going to... There's a pry spot. The problem is, is where it's at. It's up top there. And it did come with them, because those little... See those little bitty bulbs? Um, it actually came with some of those. I don't know how I'm going to get those out of there. It might be easier to pop the housing out. I think I might be able to get them out. The problem is, is that I might break them taking them out, which I guess is okay as long as your new ones work. I think I can get the new one up in there. It's just getting this one out. I can use a pair of pliers to pull it out. Let's see here. Let's just try it. I know this isn't the best method, but yeah, that's not even gonna work. The bulb is not far enough down. So I think we might be able to release that pin and maybe pull that light out. Looks like there's a piece of plastic holding that up. So we'll try that. There we go. Yeah, it's just a clip. So it pushes back. And then hopefully we can get a hold of it with some pliers. Says it working. It's going south on me. <laughs> oh man, it might be easier to take the visor out too. I'm gonna have to go get a different pair of pliers to get this thing out of here. It's going weird on me. And I'm trying to hold the camera, so one hand operation, you know. Okay, so remember when I said I didn't want to bust them? I busted them. Um, there's just no good way to get these out unless you had some sort of rubber tipped um, needle nose pliers that didn't put a ton of pressure on them. So what I did was I busted them. Um, I busted this side first and then of course blew a fuse because it grounded out. And so I've got to replace the fuse. But 
what I did was I went ahead and did the other one. I'm going to go to the other side and do it as well. Um, there's just because of this piece on the back here, you just can't get your fingers around it. If, if that weren't there, and I know what it's doing, it's protecting the heat from that cardboard behind it. Um, but if that weren't there, then you would have the option to put your fingers around it and pull it out. But because it is, it's just next to impossible. So I'm not real sure without breaking them how you're going to, um, how, to, do, how, to how to do it, to be honest with you. So let's go, uh, I'm going to do that other side. And it's the same as this, so I won't show you that. Because I'm going to have some glass, obviously, to clean up in here. I tried to make it where it fell on me. That way there was just less to clean up in the car. But uh, then we'll replace the fuse, obviously, and uh, continue on. So if you guys do the same thing or the same method as me and break the bulbs and blow a fuse, if you come down here to the passenger side compartment, um, you'll have to take the floor mat out and the little panel. But the fuse that you'll blow is the number one fuse that's up here in the top. As you can see this relay here kind of in the middle, there's a 10 and then there's a 20 that goes there. So a 20 is what I blew. So I'm going to put that back in and then we should be good to uh, put our lights back in place. So the other thing we can do is, let's turn this off. All my interior lights went off when that went. So now you can see I got my lights back. So we'll continue, now we'll put the bulbs in since we've broken the old ones and uh, got them out of the way, we should be good to put the new ones in. So take a look at these new ones, look how small they are. Not much to them and um, hopefully we don't have any issues with them going in. Woo. It's gonna be a tight fit, that's for sure. I'm gonna see if I can turn it the other way. Not a lot of room there to work with. So no, the way I had it the first time is the way it goes. Just doesn't want to go in there all the way. There we go. So you're kind of using your finger on the back of this to kind of put it in place once you get it, the bulbs in. So we're working. Those aren't super bright. I'm not as impressed with those as I am like the map lights and all the other lights. But it does give it that more modern look. I'm just snap that back in place. See if we can get our other one in here. Generally, you'll know when you start to push it in whether it's going to work or not. It'll light up. And there may, I may have to clean this out a little more since I busted it. There's probably a piece of bulb still stuck in this one, so I may have to work on it. Yeah, this one does not. Come on. Yeah, I think there's still a piece of bulb stuck in this one. I'm going to have to clear that out. But at this point, I think we can move on to, there's an under the hood light that comes with the kit. And then there is a, um, obviously we're going to go to the back and do the reverse lights. So now we're on to under the hood, and uh, this one kind of pins in. It actually isn't working right now. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just one second. But if you're seeing my hood, so funny story about that, before I built the shop, and while I had the ZR1, this thing was sitting outside. I came out one night, I heard something. Well, what I heard was a huge rat chewing that up. And uh, so the rat's gone now. Uh, I was going to make a video on me catching the rat, but it disappeared. And uh, anyway, my neighbor's dogs, I think, probably chased it off. But I need to get a new replacement for this. But we're going to replace, obviously, the bulb here. And this one, you can see it has these prongs on the end of it. So, uh, And it wasn't working anyway. I'm not 100% sure. Hopefully that is good. Let's go grab this other bulb and put it in. So this is the new one. You can see it's got those prongs on the end as well. Hopefully that rat didn't chew through my hood liner. I 
think it's easier to put the top on first. I'm going to put two on there. The kit came with two, and I think it's because of the direction they point. And I actually think they're supposed to be, let me know in the comments, I think there's supposed to be a piece of plastic on that. Let's put one here. And then we'll put another one facing the other direction. Well, we got a little more light because it did come with two. I wondered why it had two. That's probably why. Looks a little nicer. I really think there's supposed to be a piece of plastic there, guys, that covers that. Anyway, we'll look for that when we look for a new hood liner. Since this is all messed up, it sucks. But um, on to the back. So that interior kit came with um, bulbs for your license plate lights as well. And you're just going to need, I think this is a T20, T15. Get these bolts out. Holy cow, they're long-winded. Well, they're not as long as I thought. Just seemed like it was taking a minute to get them out. And if you had little hands, you might be able to reach up in there and do this without taking this out. I don't have any luck with that. There's this little window here that you can see. I'm going to clean these up before we go back together. And they're just the 194, similar to what we had um, for the interior lights. whole lot of 194s in here. Like I said, I'm going to clean this up real quick, though, before I put it back together. And then I'm also going to leave them out while I test to make sure, like I said, you know, they're polarity specific. So just to make sure that I'm not putting them in backwards, put it all back together and it doesn't work. So you can see I've got my lights on to test these to make sure that they're gonna work the wrong way. Quite a bit brighter. You can see why I wanted to turn my lights on. You put them in like this, they don't work. You turn them around, all's good. You probably hear the snow falling off the roof of my building. Anyway, we're good to go back together now. And then we will move on to the um, reverse lights. Now that we got the um, license plate lights back in place, I went ahead and took the license plate off. We're going to use that same T15 here to take this out. I'm going to be real honest with you guys. I've never taken one of these apart. This is my first C5 that I've owned. I've done a couple upgrades on C6s, but I'm hoping that there's not a lot that holds this in. I think these four T15s are all that hold it. But from the looks of things, we're going to have some cleaning here as well, which I guess I should show you guys. I do all of my cleaning off camera, and I should probably show you how crazy I am. Like on those license plate bolts or screws, I used a toothbrush and cleaned the heads of them. Nobody will ever see that. That's just how I am. I feel like if it's a part, what a great time to clean it. All right, that is how it comes apart. And then it looks like these are just turn. Yep. Similar to a tail light, honestly. Holy smokes, look at those things. Another big chunk of ice falling off the building. Holy cow, those have been in there since new, probably. So yeah, I'm going to clean this up off camera. Not too bad. I mean, this thing lived most of its life indoors. 
But let's go grab the bulbs. I'm gonna put this thing in reverse, turn the key on, so we can make sure. Now, like normally those Zevo bulbs that I'm using, um, they don't have issues with being polarity specific, but just in case, actually, holy cow, that may not, the ones I got may not work because they are not that turn-in style. They're the newer style, I'm pretty sure. We may have to do something different there. So I actually do have the right style. I didn't order the right style, but. Man, they are loose. I'm not loving the way those are fitting. See how loose they are? I wonder why this isn't the newer style fitting. That one doesn't want to work at all. Let's put the old one in and see what it does. Yeah, it works great. I think my fitting is a little off. It works for a minute not really the way I'm afraid that when I hit a couple bumps that's not gonna work all right so we're gonna go get the correct ones I ordered these other ones from Amazon I didn't even take this apart generally you should take stuff apart before but I can exchange them uh, but hopefully maybe the parts store in town has them in stock I doubt that they do so we may have to film this, the rest of this video once I get the correct ones. It sucks that these are so close. You can see the bottoms or where the difference is. You see this has two areas to make contact and the other one only has uh, one. So I think that's a majority of our problem, but we'll see if we can get some. If not, then we'll just finish this video when I get them from Amazon. So we're back, they had them. We're going to try this again. So just so you guys know, and I'll list all this stuff like always in the description, but um, 1157, not 3157 is what we needed. Way better. Yep. That's what we needed. So um, I'm going to clean all this up. Like I said, I'm not... <laughs> I should show you, but I'm not going to uh, because of how picky I am. But uh, then we'll put it all back together and take a look at it once it's um, all, you know, bolted back up. So take a look at it with all the bulbs back in. Looks really, really good, guys. So we'll take a walk around all of it. I think that was the last set of bulbs that I had to install. There are some extras now. <laughs> I know with any other project, if you have any extras left, that generally mean you, means you screwed up. But with these kits, a lot of times they come with extra. If one burns out, you don't generally have an issue. But we're good. Like I said, let's walk around and take a look at our work. Let's take a look at it all finished up now. Got the lights down there in the bottom, those lights in the top, and uh, of course the ones in the back. Just a way more modern look, especially since um, GM put LEDs in the dash cluster but they didn't put it in the outer, like you can see the gauges there. I don't understand. I guess probably LEDs were relatively new during this time, but I definitely think it looks good. And um, it, like I said, it's a way more modern look. Let's turn the tail lights on. Take a look at the LEDs and the license plate. Looks a lot better. And then uh, of course, if you guys didn't catch the video, I'll show you the headlights because we do have LED headlights as well. And those are a massive improvement. So uh, at this point, the only other things as far as like lighting I might upgrade are the lower lights. Actually one of those I believe has a small crack in it. I don't think you can see it, but it seems like when I was looking around down there, I think one of them did. But anyway, I think, I think it looks a lot better. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And for the money, like these kits are 20 bucks and they had some extra lights. That's what I've got left over. So if one burns out, you know, you can always go back and replace it, but 
definitely a way cleaner look. So the only other thing I want to do in this video, guys, is I noticed, and I just noticed this because I moved this thing back, but when I put these um, C6, now these are C6 OEM wheels, and you can see a lot of people talk about how they stick out, but I went with a specific tire, so they didn't do that. But you'll have to check that video out. I did that when I dropped it. It does have Viking coilovers all the way around, but I never set the TPMS sensor, so we're gonna try to do that as well because it's really kind of annoying and it, on the C5 it's not every time it just pops up randomly so let's see if we can get those set so I've never done this before so we're going to try it with I've got my tire learning tool and then I've also got a magnet they said sometimes a magnet will work and then I've got my phone out for instructions because like I said I've done it on C6s and it's actually pretty easy sometimes a C6 and C7 will learn on its own but this one we need to turn the key to the run position and then we need to hit the reset button over here to clear all these so door ajar and we're gonna clear everything out so you can see it's saying front left and right tire pressure um, and there's no reading so we're gonna go over here to options and we're gonna cycle through options until nothing appears on the screen here so now we're blank and then we're gonna hold down the reset button and see I'm holding it down until fob training comes up and then we're going to hit tire training. And at that point, we should be in, this, in the actual programming portion. So um, press the reset button once to learn. So we're going to click it once. All right, so it's, now it's ready to learn the front. And so we're going to go out here and see if we can walk around. Hopefully it'll work this uh, tire pressure tool that I've got. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. We'll just start with it instead of the magnet. And generally, the horn will honk. And you just have to work your way around. Come on, baby. It's always like this. Let's try the magnet. Magnet doesn't seem to work either. What you're listening for is the horn to honk. So I actually got it to work using a magnet instead of my tool. We're just using a round magnet. We started that front tire on that side. I'm just putting it around the valve stem. Just a round magnet that I had laying around. And we are all set. So once you get that last tire finished, obviously turn off your key and you are finished. Uh, it generally goes back to the fob training option. I actually had to program my fob too, so if you guys want to know how to do that, it's that same section. So you'll turn the key to run, you'll go through the reset to reset everything, and then you'll hold down the options until you get to a blank screen. Hold down the reset button, and you see fob training. You can hit options at that point or reset. Options will take you to the tire training. But if you hit reset here, you'll see you can program the fobs. But um, I already did that. For some reason, mine came, um, I don't know, it wasn't programmed, but now it is. So, a couple things. And I can't believe as easy as that was, I was using that stupid tool and it's real finicky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But a, just a simple round magnet is probably the easiest way to do this process. At this point, we're all finished up. So the lights are finished. We got the tires, uh, the program, the TPMS sensors programmed. Uh, I actually reprogrammed my fob too. I didn't show you guys that, but I showed you where to go to do that. Um, some stuff, it's just been setting around. And like I said, this the weather's terrible. I need to finish a couple other videos that I've started. And today was like one of those days I thought, man, I might as well do this. The poor C5 hasn't got a lot of love on this channel. And I know I've got some C5 fans out there. I know I've got a lot of truck guys. I know I've got a lot of Trans Am guys. But 
Um, the C5 is a car that I foresee, I, I don't foresee me ever selling. I just, I really like the look of it, guys. I, to me, it's just like a timeless look. Now, I've had a C7 Z06, I've had two ZR1 C6s, and I've had a base model C6. And if you guys have been on this channel very long, you've seen those things. Uh, maybe not the base model, but this look of this sloped back glass and this thing hammered down on these uh, coilovers. If you guys didn't catch the video where I put coilovers on this, it does not have the mono leaf that the factory put in these. I went coilovers all the way around. I'll link that video up above here. But when I did that, I did the C6 wheels. Yes, these are C6 Z06 wheels. These are OEM wheels that I found. And uh, I, just, I just like the look of it. To me, it looks, it looks killer, and I don't ever foresee myself selling it. Um, they're coming up in value. I think they will continue to do so because they're just such a timeless look. And, you know, it's kind of funny that I've kept this one out of all of them because it's just one of my favorite looking vets. It's really comfortable to drive. As a matter of fact, I think the C5 is more comfortable than the C6 and the C7 as far as like the seat comfort. It's just like sitting on a cloud. Now, going around curves and stuff like that, it may not be the greatest it may not keep you planted in the seat, but as far as like comfort of driving, I think it's worth it. But as far as the lights go, guys, for 20 bucks, I don't think you can beat that. Um, gives it a way more modern look. It's gonna use less energy when it's just setting. Um, man, this stuff, the snow is just falling off the roof. It's making tons of noise. Um, looks way more modern on the inside. Just, just a good look in my opinion. But let me know in the comments, guys, if you want to see any more stuff on the C5. Now, I don't have a ton of plans, but maybe we could do some headers or some, some simple modifications that aren't going to take a ton of time away from, you know, other projects that we got going on. But if you guys did enjoy this video, if you thought it was informative, if you thought it was kind of cool to do that upgrade, please, like always, go down there and smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are not subscribed, please go down there and subscribe. While you're down there, make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.